we take a very short trip from Riverside to San Diego to look at some boats. San Diego is considered one of the best naturally protected bays in America, so naturally it's home to thousands of boats. That makes it a good place to look for some free or really cheap sailboats. San Diego has been coping with hundreds of unwanted and abandoned sailboats and at least a hundred just in the free anchorage at Zuniga Shoal. This is a sailing mecca so we're starting our search here. On today's adventure we're going to look at cheap sailboats and even a 41 foot cabin cruiser just for fun. Here's a 1965 Choi Lee Yawl. Anyone who is familiar with sailboats knows that Choi Lees are well made and sought after boats. At first glance this boat looks like a steel. But upon closer examination, we see that the last owner, an elderly gentleman, stopped maintaining the boat for several years before he could no longer live on the boat. The teak is probably beyond repair and would need replacing. It's completely dry, brittle, cracked, and warped. Because of this, the deck is leaking into the cabin, creating a moist environment and promoting mold spore growth. Let's go below and take a look. Wow. I can already see it's a real mess in here and the smell of mold is very strong. Mold can be a serious health hazard on these old boats, but it's not beyond remediating, it's just a lot of work. A job like this may require that you take out every single piece of this interior and rebuild it from the hull up. Let's look around. Just junk everywhere, look at this. You can tell that maintenance was basically set aside for maybe a decade on this boat. The engine looks like it's in surprisingly good shape, but there's really no way to tell what's going on without taking a look inside and seeing what kind of condition she's really in. Let's look in the head. Oh my god, that really stinks. Pretty disgusting. Looks like this boat was built in 1965. You can see this is the maker plate um, built for F.W. Gledhill. This boat could indeed be restored to its full glory once again. These early fiberglass boats were made when fiberglass was still a new technology. The boat builders of the day laid the fiberglass extra thick just in case because they didn't know how it was going to really perform. This boat would definitely need to have a complete overhaul and refit. The entire interior would have to be removed and rebuilt. These boats are a real sight to see when they are properly maintained or restored and tons of teak gives them a really classic boat look and feel that they're known for. This one is probably too much work for our project and we're gonna pass. But I'm hoping someone decides to take her and restore her because she's still got the potential to be an incredible boat one day if someone's just willing to invest the time and money. The harbor master says this is a 29 foot Pearson. It looks to be a, a like a racing rig, but I haven't seen a Pearson like this before. On the outside, it looks like it's in pretty good condition. When we go inside, it's really messy. Now, overall, the boat looks pretty good, except for the trash. I think this boat could be restored for pretty cheap. It looks to be in pretty decent condition and hopefully someone takes it and gets her out on the water again. Let's go look at some other boats.
This neat little boat is Ruby. Ruby is a Catalina 27, and that's the world's most popular boat, with almost 7,000 of these boats produced by Catalina yachts. With a 2,700 pound lead keel, she displaces about 6,850 pounds. I'm not sure which model Ruby is, but she's a pretty clean boat, and she doesn't need a lot to get her out on the water. Catalina 27s were designed for coastal cruising, but believe it or not, people have sailed these things all the way around the world. hasn't been registered since 2015 so it's been sitting out here unattended for at least four years barnacles <laughs> called Ruby and she's actually pretty clean inside I'm really surprised most of these boats we look at are full of mold uh, if you saw our other video you saw the Choi Lee it was full of it looked like someone had been hoarding in there this boats in pretty decent shape at least on the interior we're gonna check the fiberglass on the deck and stuff and look for soft spots there's a little bit of water in here under the cushion that's going to turn into mold. You know, somebody ought to be coming in here and checking on this thing and letting that stuff evaporate. It does have a marine head in here, so you can use the bathroom. It's got a little bee berth up here. It looks fairly dry, other than this water here, which is probably coming in from the hatch. bed here birth turns into a table so I'm going to convert it right now and hopefully that's going to help some of the water dry off this table so this tabletop doesn't get all moldy you really just got to move the cushions here See here, there's a little curtain for privacy to close off the V-berth. Oh, and there's a little black widow down there for luck. You're lucky as long as you don't get bit. boats have a lot of storage in them you'll see under the seat here here's a little storage compartment for there's a battery down in there that actually looks like a newer battery doesn't look too bad a newer battery case maybe somebody tried to bring this thing back to life there's another storage compartment over here there's some uh that looks like black water so that's where the sewage is stored from the head and uh, we've got a stove over here a little cutting board on the top little two burner oh. stove propane it's got an ice box right here enough to keep your beers in a little sink this is a real small little sink there but 
go wash your hands and prep some food. It's got a VHF radio over there. I mean, this boat, we're gonna, I'm looking for some sails. It looks like there's a sail up on the boom, a main sail. And there's some sails down in a bag back here. So it does have some sails. We have an inv inventory dim, but. So this is the bilge here. And the bilge is the very bottom of the boat and water will build up in there. And so anytime any leaks on the boat, the water goes to the lowest point, which is the bilge. So there's a bilge bump in here, a bilge pump, but the, the battery's probably dead on this thing. It's been sitting for so long. So the bilge pump is not working and water's building up. And here it's not too bad. The water hasn't come up above the bilge pump, but in some of these older boats, the water can slowly leak up to here when they've been sitting for years. And in, in some cases, these boats will actually sink in the slip where they're parked because they get so much water leaking in them. So this one's not too bad. This boat's pretty dry. This boat does come with an anchor. I don't know how much chain is in there, but you can see it's got like a Danforth anchor on there, um, which is kind of nice. You don't have to go out and buy an anchor because a, a lot of these boats, sometimes the stuff will be stripped off them and you know, there's really nothing, nothing left for you to, 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 to utilize on the boat. You have to go out and buy new everything. So I would replace the chain in the line, but otherwise, you know, at least you could, you could take this boat out today and go sail it and anchor it out here in the harbor somewhere. So the deck looks pretty solid. There's no soft spots as I'm walking around. Sometimes these boats, maybe one, no, that's pretty good. These boats will get, uh, they have a balsa wood core sometimes. Water will leak in there, and when you step, you can feel it's it's obviously soft. And this this is very hard, so pretty solid. We're looking at the rigging, and what we see here is there's a lot of corrosion. Um, you know, this is stuff you, you're probably going to want to replace if you're going to do any real sailing. These will, you know, under heavy loads, these can break, and this is what's holding your mast up in your sail. So you want to make sure these things don't bust. These intermediate stays here, along with the fore stay and the aft stay there, that's pretty much what's holding up the, the sail and taking all the force of the wind against the sail. So you want to make sure these things are, are sound and they're not going to fail on you when you're out at sea. I'd also replace all these lines you know, you can tell these things have been out in the sun. These things are going to break on you. You want to replace all that stuff. But that's, a, you know, all these things we're talking about are relatively cheap. When you think about the cost of getting into sailing, if you were going to buy a new boat or, or you know, something that was ready to go, you could pretty much, you know, for a couple thousand bucks, you could replace a lot of the stuff that's on here for a couple thousand more dollars. You could take it to the next level. But I, I would say this thing's pretty much a coastal cruiser. This is something you're going to take out, you know, for the weekend locally. You might take this thing to Catalina. That might be as far as you want to go. Or, I mean, you could take her down to Mexico if you're not going too far out to sea. But uh, it's, it's a decent boat and it's in pretty good shape considering it's a free boat. Hey, I'm going to move the rudder while you're back. See it? What happens? You see it moving? No. Oh yeah, you see it moving now. Oh, that's taking some of the shit off. <laughs> right? Ew. I would get in there and scrub it off. It might surprise you to learn this little boat, I believe, sold for about $200, which I think is a real steal considering the condition that she's in. This is a Chris Craft Commander 410. Chris Craft was one of the first manufacturers of fiberglass cruisers like this one. When these boats were introduced in the late 60s, most companies were still building them completely from wood. In restored condition, these boats are floating palaces. They came standard with all kinds of features like full instrumentation, dual staterooms, a swim platform, 
full kitchen and even a microwave oven, which was high technology back then. This one needs quite a bit of work and is one of the earlier models. Chris Craft later named these constellations during the last two years of production. There's a fly bridge up there. Got a little barbecue back here. I mean, we got some kicket space back here. This thing's basically like a, it's like a two bedroom apartment on the water. It does need a lot of work. This thing, uh, it's gonna need a ton of work. Let's go downstairs and see what we've got down here. Not as moldy as some of the other boats we've looked at, at least not up here. Uh, we've got some beers here left over from 1980 is what it looks like you can see the look in here the the dang beer caps are rusting on the bottle we'll save those beers for you so there's some it looks like some engine room access down here and yep there's the this thing's got two engines i can't tell what kind from here but uh maybe we'll go down there and have a look in a little bit first we'll check out the the cabins. There's an aft cabin here. This is bigger than some of the apartments I've lived in. It does have a bathroom. Again, it looks like somebody maybe started some work on here and then quit. It's got a shower, a little bed back here, a closet. I mean, this could be a, a nice space if it was fixed up. I mean, it's going to cost thousands of dollars just to do this space right here. Stop, pause. And then you can see the bilge on this has got a little bit of water in it, too. They got a little electric fireplace here. Somebody's been snooping around on here, checking it out. You've got a pretty decent little kitchen up here. It looks like a four burner stove. A sink, cabinets for storage, some electrical panels there, there's your isolator, storage, storage, a little fridge, more storage under the seats, there's another little berth up in here, looks like uh, they got a bunk bed and a a washer machine. It looks like maybe one of those little RV washers. With the washer and dryer. Let's see. Yeah, the Combomatic. So a little head right here with a sink and some kind of shower type thing. I've never seen a V-birth shower like this, but this has one. Very roomy. A uh, bunk bed here. Looks like a full-size person could sleep here. And a little mini bunk bed down below. For the dog. Yeah, for the dog. It looks like they, they cut that bunk bed in half to make room for the... I know there's some paperwork to sort out on this Chris Craft Commander 410, but at the end of the day, the marina wants it gone, and it could be a great opportunity for someone. We didn't find the boat of our dreams, but we're still looking. It's hard to have a bad day when you're looking at boats and down on the water. We had a great time in San Diego, and we're going to continue our search for that special boat. Check out our next episode to see where we end up next on our boat hunting adventure as we go to other marina communities in search of that special boat. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.